Saturday and saw a 49 year old. My name is Andy Hornby, photographer and vlogger. 15 years ago I started teaching myself photography. Today I travel the UK as a professional wedding photographer, landscape photographer and filmmaker. Learn from my experiences, my mistakes and my tips and advice. Join me on my photography adventures. Hi there. Welcome to another video. I'm just on my way to a photo walk, the normal photo walk I do on a Monday night, which is down at the shipwreck. Uh, if, you, if you're new to my channel, you may not know that every Monday night I do a photo walk down to a Portsmouth shipwreck. Uh, and tonight's no different. However, I was contacted by a company a few weeks ago with regards to reviewing a bit of their kit, which is a first for me, it's quite good. Uh, I'm quite happy about that. Uh, it's a company called Cinephoto and they are a Chinese company. I know at first you might think, oh, Chinese company, what you're doing getting kit from a Chinese company. But you know what? Most of the stuff we buy nowadays is even made in China or at least produced somewhere in the region. So I wasn't actually put off by that. Furthermore, I did a bit of research. I found out that you know on Trustpilot they've got pretty good reviews and uh, on other sites that review the reviews it kind of says that their reviews are real or they're not just fake reviews that you find all over the internet. So I was already quite keen in contacting this company and uh, seeing what they had to offer and actually they do tripods and uh, ball heads. So they say, I went back to them and they said that uh, they would be happy for me to try out one of their new top of range ball heads or top of their range ball heads so I was quite intrigued and wondered if it actually ever come to something uh, actually after a very very short period of time I was quite surprised actually arrived through the post I got it last week and uh, yeah I'm going to do a review on it disclaimer I've not been paid by them at all they've sent this to me for free uh, so I'm going to give it my honest review today, I'm not going to beat around the bush and uh, yeah, we're going to take it on the photo walk, give it, its, uh, give it a trial, see what the crack is. No, not at all, mate. Okay, yeah, so it's from Cinephoto, and it is their, their Q8 range. And this thing is pretty good, actually, compared to the one that came with this tripod. It's uh, lightweight, slimmer, actually, and it's actually got the same buttons that I have on mine. I'll show you my one of them at the moment. So on here, you've got the main ball head control, which is that big one there. You've got minute adjustment for the ball head up there, and this one controls your spin. So as long as the tripod is upright, you can get a really nice, good, smooth motion through there. So if you're doing anything like a panorama, you're going to get a nice, smooth action through there. Uh, for video, it's awesome. I'll do some video on it in a bit and show you. Uh, so yes, I'm going to get my camera on here and uh, show you how to set it up. It's quite simple. Love this crate. 
Yeah, yeah. So literally, we're going to put this on the bottom of there like so. It's got a nifty little arm there, so you can tie it right up, push it in, and literally open that up. We're on, set to go. Perfect. Really simple, easy to use. Uh, it's quick release as well, so you've got no issues there whatsoever. It's actually got a control on there, which means it won't slide off. So even if it comes loose slightly, it'll move. It actually, you can't get that off there. It'll slide. It's got a little on the plate there. It's got these little things here which stops it from moving past these bits so I don't just dangle this down and show you so these bits in there will stop it from so if you're on an angle there and it's not quite tight enough you up there it loosens a bit we'll just drop to there it's not gonna fall off and that's a two that's a two and a half actually this my seven r2 so this is my three grand's worth of kit I'm happy to just try this on as far as ball heads go, I don't have any complaints. Okay, so from here you can see actually that there's quite a considerable difference between this new one and my one. In fact, my one's quite heavy. Let me take this off and see how heavy this is. So, yeah, this one is much lighter, much lighter, much smaller in profile. The barns are slightly round, a different kind of way, but they're, although they're, they're round, the side and not on the same side as the uh, thing you see, they're pretty much opposite each other uh, in terms of buttons. So there you go, there's the buttons there. The top seems a bit smaller. Now I've got a, an L bracket at home. No, I didn't bring. That fits this just, it kind of, you have to kind of really push it in and it, you hit the stuff and you tighten it up, it's fine, it works. But on this one, this plate is slightly bigger, which means the housing is slightly bigger. And my L plate just slides in really quickly, really easy, and uh, I have no issues out between this one and that one. Uh, there is a difference in, in the housings at the top there. The other difference with, with my old one that came with this is uh, we've got a couple of bubble measurements there. One on the top there and one on the side there so that when you've got it on its side you can see whether you're, you're upright, which is fantastic. On this one, however, we've got three. We've got one on that side, one on that side and one on there. So I've actually got three, so I can I can tell if I'm completely upright. I can see how it is. It doesn't, however, help me out too much if I'm doing a panorama because the actual uh, tripod itself needs to be level. Uh, and this doesn't judge whether the tripod is level, it just judge whether this ball head above that point is level. So I'll never really understand why they have that because for, for panorama shots, it makes no difference. You need to get your tripod level. Having a level on there, the top bit, makes no difference because you can be off by quite a bit on your tripod, level that up, and when you spin it round, you're still on a curve. It's still going up and down and all over the place. So for me, it makes no difference. I have to get my tripod level, and uh, I do that by other means. I actually take this off, and I've got a little bubble level. I'll put on the top of, top of the actual bit take this off and show you on there I've got a bubble that I just sit on there make sure that plate on top there is level put this on and then level up the ball head so I never know why they bother with this because the, the, the bubble I put on there I can just put on top of my camera right that's the point so uh, it is what it is the one there it's nice doesn't uh, give me anything more or less than what I already have. Uh, so yeah, so you can see the difference is quite considerable. This one's a lot bigger, a lot heavier, and uh, 
housing isn't as wide or doesn't go as wide as I sometimes need it to be when I'm using my L bracket. But apart from that, there's no major difference. The buttons are pretty much the same, although these are in a different location and these have rubber on it, whereas these are completely metal. Not that fast. Uh, the spin on this is a lot better than this one. If I open this up and spin it around, I actually get a clinking where it's, there's some kind of mechanism inside. Helicopter. Uh, some kind of mechanism, mechanism inside. If I want to go a little bit tighter and still spin it, it actually clunks. So it's this one, but although this is very cheap. So we'll come to the cost of this now. My one, my Andoa one that comes with this, although this is a rebranded make, you can find this tripod as an Andoa, you can find it as another make. Uh, there's about three or four different companies that rebrand this tripod. It's a fairly inexpensive tripod. It's designed to be a little bit like the Manfrotto B3. Works similarly to that and uh, there's a cheaper version. I throw this thing around everywhere. Love the tripod. The ball head I've got no problems with at all. I've never had any issues apart from when I try and use my old bracket. It just takes a bit longer to slot my bracket in there. Sorry about the wind. But apart from that, there's no problems at all. If I wanted to replace this, if I wanted to buy it on Amazon UK, it will cost me £16, I think it was, that I found. Uh, this one was sent to me with an invoice, although I didn't actually pay for it, but the, the invoice says $60, which today's inflation rate in the UK should be about £45, right? Actually, it's not. If you go on uh, the link that's in the description below for this thing, this is still £60. Now, in the in the photography world, it, it, it really grinds my gears that you can find stuff in America for a certain amount of money, or you expect it to be a comparable price for the, for the exchange rate. And in fact, it's not. This thing on Amazon is £60. Why? If it's $60 in the US, it should be £45 in the UK, right? If you take the exchange rate into account. And the, the way they get away with it is because you can't buy it in the US and have it shipped here because you're paying import tax, right? It's, oh, they just, they, they just haven't got a distributor in the UK and they, they must be sending these directly from China for some reason. And uh, yeah, you just you get stitched in the UK for import tax uh, or you, you pay through the nose via a distributor somewhere uh it just it, it, it's, it's the photography world right it's what we what we it's what we live in is what we we do is what we, we we just have to take it for granted i suppose so yes if you're in the us 60 dollars or there's about 62 dollars something like that currently on amazon and uh in the uk this is uh 60 pounds 59.99 i think it was or thereabouts so that's what you'll pay uh this thing that came with that in fact, this whole, this whole tripod uh, cost about the same as that, give or take. But if you wanted to buy this by itself, the Andoa version, uh, if I remember what, rightly, what I saw the other day, was about £16. Uh, in conclusion, actually, for me, I like this. I think it's actually really, really good. Uh, for what it is, I think, I think everything about it is this and just a little bit better. Uh, would I buy it if I had £60? Yeah, I think I probably would, to be fair. Uh, and that surprised me saying that, because I weren't expecting this to be all that good. Uh, but it is. I actually really, really, really like it. I took this on my uh, uh, photography trip to Durdle Door a few nights ago to get the Milky Way. I was going to vlog that, by the way, but I didn't actually have time. Uh, and uh, I was trying to find my footing moves on the cliff top and all kinds of things were going on. but. Uh, didn't have time so I didn't vlog that but I actually used this for the first time on that shoot this is the picture I got not that having this made the picture but this actually made it easier for me to use my old bracket I've done a five shot portrait uh, panorama and this was really useful using my old bracket slotted in I had no issues bear in mind it's pitch black where we are because uh, it has to be to get the milk away right yeah I'd give this the thumbs up if you have got 60 pounds and you want a really good sturdy ball head this is the way to go this company do do cheaper ones by the way this, this isn't the, this is the most expensive one they do there are cheaper ones that they do which 
generally don't come with all the buttons. They, they like reduce the buttons down so you don't have the minute adjustment for the ball head, or particularly on one, or you might not have the, uh, the, the, the other buttons on another one, but whatever. Uh, yeah, you could get this a bit cheaper, but this is their top of range one. If I was on a budget, I wouldn't say no to this. I'd purchase it again. If this, if this had broken and didn't have that one, I probably would just buy another one of these again. Uh, if I was strapped for cash, if I had 60 quid, I would definitely buy this one. Love it, do like it. Uh, like I say, I'm surprised that I like it so much, but it really helped me out on my shoot the other night. I'm gonna keep this on my tripod actually, because it was obviously sent to me. And I'll just say again, disclaimer, I'm not paid to do an advertisement for this company. They sent it to me out of goodwill and uh, asked me to do an honest review. And this is my honest review. Awesome ball head. So thank you for watching. Hope this was informative. I don't do these very often because to be honest, it's the first time someone's ever sent me some gear to review. Uh, uh, if you're out there and you're watching this and you have gear that you want me to review, send it to me. I'll take it and I'll review it. More than happy for that. You know, there might be a big company out there like Sony who want to take me on and uh, uh, I'll be a Sony artisan for this stuff. Send me some Sony gear. Uh, so anyway, uh, that never happened. But still, uh, I'm happy with this and I'm uh, going to go and shoot some, shoot some stuff. Just on another note before I go, this Friday I'm going to be going on a photography trip up and down the UK. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I can't wait. I'm quite psyched for it, to be fair. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while now. I've been, I've been uh, preaching it to pretty much everyone I find. And uh, I'm going to be going to some places in the UK, which uh, it's just a dream for a photographer to go to. So if you're interested in, in watching my vlogs, definitely subscribe. Hopefully by the end of next week, I'll have at least one video out. So I'm going to do a series of videos from each location or each part of the country I go to. So some of those locations are going to include Cornwall, and I'm going to be going up to uh, Anglesey area of Wales, North Wales. I'll be going to Ribblehead Viaduct, which is, uh, I'm going to be spending a night and a morning there. So I'm going to be getting sunset and sunrise. I can't wait, that's a place I've wanted to go to for such a long time now. Uh, yeah, I just, I just can't wait for that. It's going to be absolutely awesome. And then we're going to be crossing the country doing a little visit to family, Middlesbrough way. Coming down the coast, we'll be going to Whitby, and then we're going to some more family in Hull. Potentially going to be doing the Humber Bridge, because uh, I used to live up there and I've never shot it, and I want to do that. I ain't coming home, so uh, yeah, so it's going to be a long, long journey in a camper van with the missus and the kid and the dog. Uh, yeah, it's going to be quite amazing. Look out for that stuff. I'm going to be vlogging pretty much everything I can do. The whole journey. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be knackered by the time I get home. But I know it's going to be thoroughly enjoyable. I just hope for good weather. Uh, potentially, beginning of the week next week, if there's good weather, I might see if there's any kind of Milky Way stuff I can do up north. Uh, find a dark sky site somewhere. Um, I just hope for a decent Milky Way shot. My camera's wobbling, sorry. It's on my old tripod because I wanted to put this on my new tripod. My old tripod is pretty crap. Uh, so I brought it out of me. So yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, smash that thumbs up because uh, that's always gonna help. Subscribe because I'm nearly at a thousand subscribers and uh, I can't wait to get to a thousand. It's a massive milestone for me. Uh, today, I reached 950, which is, which is awesome in, in its own right because for the last year I've, I've been shooting and doing video. Uh, it's, it's been a big thing for me and I'm just, I'm just pleased that those of you who have subscribed are following me and uh, yeah, just want to say thanks. Thank you, I'm gonna say thanks. Right, I'm gonna go and do some shooting and uh, yeah, put this away. Cheers, I'll see you on the next one, keep shooting. Ta.